So this is the flower we are going to paint today and I found it in my garden. I'm not 100% sure what it's called because I didn't actually plant it but I think it's called a double Japanese rose. But the thing that's so nice about this flower is it's got these beautiful kind of pom-pom like flowers which are really satisfying and relatively easy to paint. So that's why I thought this is actually a great one to paint. And it kind of comes back to what I was saying about inspiration that sometimes the best inspiration is the simplest inspiration and the one that's right in front of your nose. So this is in my garden, so this is what I'm going to go for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post some photographs of it um, on stories and if you want to use those photogra photographs as your inspiration and you want to take a screenshot of them then you can do that. Um, but if you just want to have a look at this video then that's also good too. The other flower that's quite similar to this and look actually is a dandelion. So if you wanted to find some dandelions somewhere you could probably get quite a similar result. So I've popped them in a vase quickly to keep them fresh and I, I'm going to take a couple of photos of them up close and in the vase and I'll take some photos of them not in the vase. So if you want to use any of those photos as your inspiration for the painting then you can. And um, yeah, have a really really good look at them. It's really important when you're painting something to really look at it. So really look at all the petals on the flowers, all the detail, drink it all in. And then that will come out when you're painting all that beautiful detail. So much of painting is in the looking. So use your eyes, look at the plant before you start painting. Okay, so that's me. I'm set up. I've got everything here. My water's over to the right here. I've also got the flowers on the table that you can't see. They're probably just out of shot. Um, but I like to have what I'm painting in front of me. So if you don't have real flowers, you could have um, your iPhone next to you or your iPad with the pictures of the flowers that I've taken if you want to use that as inspiration. And I have to admit, I do have an extra green colour. I'm not mad on all the greens in this palette, so I've got this extra kind of colour of a slightly muddy green, which I really like. So I'm going to use that as well. And uh, the biggest tip I'm going to give you with watercolours is always start with your lightest colour. Watercolour is really about layering. So start light and you can always add in dark and keep going. But once you've gone dark, you basically can't go back. So that is the biggest tip. Always start with your lightest colour. So I'm going to start with this really light yellow colour. Give it a wee test test that I'm happy with the colour. This is a size 10 brush that I'm using here. So I'm also probably going to use a little bit of artistic license. The way I paint is I am not a botanical painter, so I don't paint sort of perfect replicas of the flowers that I see in front of me. I like to use quite a lot of artistic license. So whether that be in the colour or the scale, that's kind of how I like to how I like to do things. So I'm just gonna go for it. So I'm adding on basically my first layer. And I like a lot of water on my brush. Um, I just like the kind of movement it gives. So I try to pick up a lot of water and a lot of colour. And just basically doing the under layer of these beautiful pom pom flowers. And while it's still wet at this stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a slightly darker yellow. And just go in and just let the watercolour like do its thing, like let the colours bleed and move around. And this is going to be the under layer to the painting. And what I really want to try and encourage you guys with this is it's honestly just about having fun. Don't put yourself under any pressure. It is just truly about enjoying the act of painting. And painting, like I say to the kids, is freedom. And especially at this time, it can be such a great de-stress. When you paint, you tend not to think about anything else. You just kind of get absorbed in the moment. So it's such a good thing at the moment to do, just to kind of zone out and try and take your mind off things if you're worried about what's going on at the moment. So just adding in another layer there of a slightly darker colour into the middle. And just letting the paint and the paper do their thing. Letting it all mix and merge. One down here as well. So these are really lovely flowers to paint and actually if you aren't used to painting or you're not confident a flower like this is actually a really good one to start with because the shape is kind of like really sort of pom-pom like and quite kind of loose so you can be a bit loose with it all. When you paint more defined flower shapes like something like a bluebell it's a lot harder to paint so these are great starting ones and if you like this kind of shape, another shape that's actually really good to paint is um, a sunflower. 
um, and another one is I actually really like paint their dandelions they're really similar to this and I think they're really fun to paint okay so almost there just deciding where I'm going to put these next ones there's more like a side on flower over here so like really use the shape of the brush to help you get these petals and again like go in while it's still wet add in that second layer to get this really beautiful under layer just a little small one here I'm also going to add in some buds I always like adding in buds so I think we'll add in a little bud over here I'm adding one up here as well. And then going back in, adding this yellow while it's all still wet and letting it all kind of merge and flow together. Same with the buds, just adding a little bit in there. And I might even actually take this orange and just add the tiniest, tiniest hint of orange. So obviously if you want the colour to be lighter, like the more water you add to it, the lighter the colour is going to be. So if you really want to water it down, you can just get that hint of colour. I just want a hint here in the middle, that darker colour. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these dry. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to add in just one more down here. Um, but I'm going to let them dry whilst we paint the stalks and the leaves. And then we'll go in and add in a bit more detail to get more definition to these flowers at the end. But yeah, let the paint flow, let your mind flow. Don't put any pressure, just relax all about just having fun and enjoying yourself and actually that's when you get the best results and I truly mean that I'm not just saying that like you truly get the best results when you try not to overthink it okay so I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush with a slightly finer tip to go in and work on the stalks now so I'm going to use this green color that I have in this pan down here it's like a really nice kind of like grassy green colour. And if you really use the tip of the brush when you do the stalks, you know, use them, really drag the brush across the paper. That helps you get these nice delicate stalks. And a lot of these uh, leaves are really lovely. They're actually a really nice shape. So again, use the shape of the brush, like work with the shape of the brush to get your leaf shape. different colour green for some of these leaves as well. Setting a bit more of this kind of grassy green colour in. So again like loads of water, let the paint really flow. And there's a bit of um, texture on these leaves so I'm just going to like pull out the edges slightly just to get some of that texture. So 
let the colors do their work, let them all really merge together. You know, one of the things I love about watercolour painting is for me, it is absolutely not about being perfect. If you know me, I am far from perfect in so many aspects of my life and that's one of the things I love about watercolour papers. I think it just gives you a little bit of freedom and a little bit of movement and that's one of the things I love about it. I think you can be a bit imperfect with it and it still looks nice. Okay, so it's coming together. Just a couple more little leaves up here. Yeah, so part of the joy of watercolour is actually just, it's the texture that the paint and the paper make when they come together. So go with it, just let it all flow. Okay, so some of these are starting to dry off now, so and go back in and lay, add that layer of extra detail and you know you're going to have more time than me as well so give yourself the time to let it dry in between layers if you have the time and it does really help if you want to go and add in that extra layer of detail. So for the ones that have dried, I'm just going to go back in with this darker yellow and just add some of these petal shapes on top just to give an extra little element of definition. But as I said before, you know, I'm not a perfect painter and I'm not a strict botanical painter, so it's really just about adding little bits of definition into the painting just to give it a bit more dimension. And again, like even at this stage, I still like keeping loads of water on my brush. And really use the shape of the brush, like let the brush help you make the shapes of the flowers. I'm just going to go add a bit more definition to the edges here. Yeah, so that's pretty much it to be honest with you. Um, I might go back in and add a little bit more detail later on. Um, for the time being, I think that's pretty much it. And um, yeah, remember it's honestly just about having fun, enjoying yourself, using painting as a de-stressing technique. And hopefully that's given you a little bit of inspiration and you've enjoyed painting along. And I'll really look forward to seeing what you do. So share your pictures with me because I'd absolutely love to see them. And I'm gonna go and scavenge in the garden and see what other flowers I can find for us to paint. That was lovely, really enjoyed it. And thanks for joining me. Um, let me know if you get any questions of course and hopefully I'll see you next time when we do the next one. Bye!